St. Paul's Cathedral and arriving to attend the Royal Naval Centenary Service, Admiral of the Fleet, Earl Mountbatten of Burma and the Countess. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent, Chief Commandant Women's Royal Naval Service, and representing Her Majesty the Queen, Prince Philip, who knows, of course, at first hand, the sterling value of the Royal Naval Reserve. Under the White Ensign, the RNR, drawn largely from the Merchant Navy, served with great distinction in two world wars. From 1939 to 1945, for example, their experience and training were of the utmost assistance in supplementing the great expansion of the Navy. Their service took them to every theatre of the war at sea. They were present at famous actions. They took part in the vital work of convoys. As in that conflict, so for a hundred years they have been a ready reserve of trained seamen. Now is the time of tribute to all the fighting services. The Royal Air Force, whose victory over the Nazis played so great a part in making the liberation of the continent a possibility. On D-Day itself, as well as clearing the skies of the enemy, the RAF took the glider-borne forces across, the spearhead of the attack. Pictures of D-Day, when the Great Armada crossed the Channel on its tremendous task, illustrate the enduring debt owed to the three fighting services. Transported by the Navy, the liberating forces of the Army here faced one of the greatest battles in history. It is well that we who survive should remember those who lost their lives in the cause of freedom. After the years of defeat and the years of struggle, now came the vast Allied operation that brought victory in sight. To all who fell, the nation once again pays homage. It is the hour of remembrance. The solemn Whitehall service ends on the note of faith and hope for the future. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.